Hi everyone and welcome to a Hungry Heavy Crafts video. I'm Leslie Yeoman and today I have another interactive card to share with you guys today featuring the Ye Kite stamp set and the slide on over dies from Lawn Fawn. So stick with me and I'll walk you through how I made this card. So to start off with this card, I'm going to need two panels which are exactly the same size. So I'm using this large stitch rectangles die also from Lawn Fawn. This is a total Lawn Fawn fest today, by the way. And I've cut these out of watercolor cardstock because it's a bit sturdier. And I'm going to use some of the puffy cloud border dies, two of these, to cut out the top piece of cardstock. And um, these are all going to be inlaid together to create the scene. And I'm just going to cut a grassy border on the bottom here as well. So now I have four almost like jigsaw pieces that all fit together. I want to add some color to this card. So I'm using my ink blending tool with some tumble glass distress ink just to add some color to the bottom edge only of the top three of my jigsaw pieces. So I'll do this one, which is clouds going into the grass as well. Add a little color to that. And now I can start thinking about where I want to have my little channel for the kite to go along. So I've stuck that down using some washi tape and to make sure my two pieces, my two inlaid pieces don't move, I'm adding a strip of washi tape on the back as well. So now I have my piece with the little channel in it and I can line this up perfectly on the second piece of cardstock, the other large stitch rectangle piece. Add a little glue into the hole and stick the die cut right in place. Now let's move over to the grass. I'm also using some distressing for this. I'm using the shabby shutters for a nice bright green color. I'm coloring it all over that spiky piece, but also on the bottom section of my um, bottom piece of cardstock. And you'll see why in a minute. Because this is distressing, I can reactivate it. So I'll squirt it with some clean water and pick up some droplets so that it has a nice distressed look. So I want to make sure all these pieces are together so I can handle them better. So I've put some washi tape on the back and I'm going to move over now to the mechanism which makes all the magic happen here. I'm using one of these tongue depressors or craft sticks here for the mechanism which is going to make my kite move and to do so I need a hole in the wood and also a hole in that bottom panel. So I'm drawing a line down the center of my rectangle here and I'm using a silent setter to create a hole in the middle of the card and my crocodile to cut a little hole in the little craft stick. I'm going to attach these together really loosely using a flat brad and then I want to figure out exactly where I'll put the foam dot so that I can attach the kite and I discovered that the channel wasn't really wide enough so I cut another die or another one of those slide on over channels right beneath the one I had already created and that gives me a little bit more room for the kite to maneuver. While that's drying I'm going to stamp my little critters and two of the kites on also onto some watercolor cardstock and leave that to dry before I move over to watercoloring. Now at this point, I didn't quite know whether I was going to have the stick exposed at the bottom or attach something else to it. So I decided that it'd be better if the stick didn't um, reach the bottom of the card. So I cut another hole and I punched another hole into the stick a little bit further down so that the stick was a little bit further up on my card. So this did mean that I had to trim off the top so I just trimmed that off using a pair of heavy duty scissors and trimmed off the corner so it will not really jaggedy. So then I'm going to trim this top section so that I can see the lollipop stick sticking out. And I'm using the simple stitch hillside border dies for these and lining it up exactly where I want to cut it. So now I have this top panel and a nice curve so I can see the stick. I want to make sure that the foam tape doesn't interfere with the mechanism at all. So I traced along where the stick moves and made sure to stick my foam tape in areas that wasn't going to interfere with it. 
Now all my little jigsaw pieces are just held together with washi tape so I decided to add a little panel of cardstock on the back just to make it a little bit more robust before sticking it onto the top of the foam tape. I'm using some watercolors here to add some color to my little bunny and my little squirrel and of course the kites and I've cut out two kites one um, I've trimmed with a border and one slightly smaller so that when I lay some twine onto the, the colored kite I can use the other one for the backing. Use a very small foam dot and place my lollipop stick in the center and made sure that the foam dot was placed to the top of the channel. This gives me more movement when I move the stick back and forth. On the other end of the string, my little bunny is going to be holding it. Oh, and my kite actually popped off. So I had to stick my bunny down and then stick this back on with a little bit more glue. And I put a heavy object on that while it dried. Now, unfortunately my camera gave out just about here, but I did re-record a little bit extra so that you could see what, how I finished the card. I used this stamp set here, which is called Forest Friends from My Favorite Things to stamp a greeting on here. And then I cut it out using a die and I stuck it on top of the lollipop stick using some glossy accents. I wanted a really strong adhesive. So now I can move that whole panel and watch my kite flying in the wind. To finish the card, I just added a little bit of glossy eyes using the glaze pen, the black glaze pen. I think this gives a nice shiny finishing touch to the card. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Please hop on over to hungryheavycrafts.com or please click on the button above to watch more of my crafty videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.